quality attributes of embedded system. So the attributes which contribute to the quality characteristics of embedded system are called as the quality attributes. It is broadly divided into two categories. One is operational quality attribute and the other one is non-operational quality attributes. So here we are going to study about the non-operational quality attributes. So what are non-operational quality attributes? So non-operational quality attributes are the characteristics which are focused when the system is in offline mode. Okay, let us look into the characteristics one by one. The first is the testing and debugging. Testing and debugging both can be done at the hardware as well as the firmware level. Both can be done at the hardware and the firmware level. So what is testing? So you design a system. You test the system whether the operation is Perfect. That is, you check whether it is working fine. You call it as testing. Now, let's take you have a headset. You check whether the audio works properly. And if the audio works perfectly, you tell the system is tested. If it is not working, then you say there is some problem in the system. That is called as testing. So if you look at this picture, there is an engineer called test engineer who does this testing. Okay. If the system works fine, yes, it's a tick. If it does not work fine, then the bug has to be fixed. The bug is the error here. Okay, so now you understood what is testing. Now in debugging, which is done both, debugging also can be done both at the hardware as well as the firmware level. Okay, in the debugging phase, investigation is done to find out where there is an error. For example, in the same headset, if you don't get the proper audio in the debugging phase, the root cause of why the audio is not got properly is found out. Yes, so the investigation to find out the root cause and fixing the bug is done in the debugging. Okay, so testing and debugging are done both at the hardware and firmware level. In the testing phase, it is tested for the function to work properly. And in the debugging phase, if there is an error, the root cause of the error is found out in the debugging phase. Now, it's the second characteristic. Second characteristic is the evolvability. Okay, the best example I can sort out here is the phase when we had demonetization. Yes, so you remember what is demonetization. So when there was demonetization, did they reconstruct all the ATMs? Definitely no. They made small changes and they reused the ATMs which were present. Okay, so when when the money was replaced from one form to another form, they did not take out all the ATM machines and they did not install new machines, okay? They used the same machine and made just small changes to accept the new, new kind of money, new kind of currency, okay? That is called as evolvability. So what is evolvability? Evolvability is again something related to the same biological term. It is called as the non-heritable variation. So this availability must take the advantage of supporting new firmware or hardware technologies. Okay, so when the technology advances, your system must be capable of accepting it and evolving with it. Okay, next is the third characteristic. The third characteristic is your portability. Okay, so what is portability? Portability is nothing but your system independence. Okay, what is system independence? System independence is nothing but the migration. So what is migration? Migration is done at various levels. It can be done with the hardware, it can be done with the operating system, or it can be done with an environment. Okay, now let's take, you develop a game. Okay, this game, when you say it is portable, it means that game must support in your desktop, it must support in your laptop, it must support in your phone, it must support in your tab. It must be able to work in all the environments. Then you say the system is portable. Okay, I have an example for this. You would have seen in many places powered by Java, many games you would have seen powered by Java. Yes, so what is this? So when you develop an application with Java, which was developed by Sun Microsystems, that application is portable 
for all operating systems. Okay, that application is portable for all operating systems. Fine. Whereas if you develop something with Microsoft, it is portable only with Microsoft. Okay, whereas if you develop with Java, it is applicable for all operating systems. Any applications you develop with Java, it is suitable for all operating systems. So that is called as portability here. Okay, the next is the time to market or the time to prototype and market. Okay, so what is this? This is the time elapsed between the product, the conceptualization of the product. So once you design to design a product, the time from that to the selling is called as the time to market. Okay, so now you have an idea of designing a system. Let's say you have an idea of designing an automatic sanitizer dispenser because during this Corona period, this automatic sanitizer dispenser became very famous. So you, just, you, you have an idea of designing this product, okay? Now you start all the work and the time you start selling the product from the time you got the idea to the time you sell the product is called as the time to prototype and market. This is very important because sometimes you may have the idea, but you may take some time in developing the product. Okay, so what happens? So you may get some of the competition, okay? And the competitor may, may develop the product and may sell the product before you do. Okay, so this time to market and time to prototype is a very important factor. Second thing, so like I told you, you have planned to design an automatic sanitizer dispenser and you've thought of a technology, okay? Now in the recent trend with advancements in technology, there is a technology which is overcoming the technology you have thought, okay? Again, it is going to be a problem, okay? So once you, you, you design, you think to design a product, you must immediately work hard and consider all the factors and you must bring it to the market, okay? Otherwise you may get competition or some of the new technology may come in. All this will make up your product a great failure. So considering this time to prototype and market is very important when it comes to the commercial view. The last one is your per unit cost, cost and revenue. Okay, this cycle is called as the PLC, PLC curve. So what is PLC curve? PLC means product life cycle. So I told you, you have an idea, fine. So what are the various stages your product will go, will undergo? First is your product development. So what is what will happen in this product development? You will have your idea, fine. You will create a prototype, you will roadmap it, and you will do the actual designing and the development, okay? Then is your product introduction, the second stage. Third is the growth. Fourth is the product maturity, and fifth is the product retirement. Okay, now let us consider how the revenue will be, that is how the sales will be. So we are considering this. During the product development, the revenue will be zero. Fine. During this product development, the revenue will be zero. There will be only investment. You have to do only the investment. Okay. Now, you are, once the product is developed, you are introducing the product to the market. Okay. Slowly, your revenue goes up. Okay. Fine. Then, during the growth stage, your revenue increases. And during the maturity, the revenue will be at its peak. Fine. And one particular point, at one particular point of time, your product revenue will go down when there is an introduction of new product with competitor, which is a competitor to yours, this revenue comes down. Okay, fine. Next is the unit cost. To explain the unit cost, I will take the best example. You are purchasing a mobile. Let's consider the mobile is introduced only today. Yes, the cost will be very high at the introduction stage. Then naturally, after some months, the cost decreases. That is what is shown in the unit cost. Fine. The last is your profit. Okay. Initially, your profit will be negative. Okay. You will not get any profit when you introduce. Then slowly during the growth phase, your profit increases. And after that, your profit naturally decreases. Okay. So here, the important thing you have to consider is, after your product becomes mature and when a new product is introduced, which is a competition of yours, your product gets retired. Okay, so this particular life cycle curve tells you the per unit cost and revenue.
Hope you understood all the concepts. If you have any doubts, you can ask me. Thank you. Thank you.